And to decode all of this further, we have been joined by Arup Das Gupta from Ahmedabad. He is the former deputy director of ISRO. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. We have just been told that the satellite has successfully separated and the scheduled proceedings for at least today has been named a success. What are your inputs and how are you seeing this mission? Thank you very much for the kind introduction and the opportunity to discuss this momentous event on your channel. Uh, this is indeed a, a very uh, heartening uh, experience to see uh, this launch uh, of one of the most powerful rockets that ISRO has developed and for a mission that is also uh, very important from the point of view of uh, it's very important from the point of view of achieving a certain milestone. The moon beckons and we are getting ready. The first attempt we failed but failure is a stepping stone to success. The second attempt which is right now going on I hope will be successful because many uh, changes have been done and after the study of the earlier failure and this is not the end but the beginning because ultimately we have to send an astronaut to the moon and perhaps beyond. Absolutely now so so if, if successful this mission it will make India the fourth country to achieve a controlled landing on the moon this is of course after Russia, US and China how do you assess this, sir? Uh, I assess this as a major uh, step. And uh, I have uh, read and seen uh, many of the things that have been done for this mission. And uh, I am sincerely hoping that it, this will be a resounding success. Because this is what we will need to do more and more to be able to establish ourselves not only as a very good organization for looking at planet Earth, but also for looking at the moon and other celestial bodies. All right, now let's talk about the LVM-3. The ISRO chief as well has been constantly mentioning about it and saying it has yet again proved its all might and its capability and successfully launched the uh, rocket, of course. So how do you see this uh, and how is LVM-3 is considered as among the most unique rockets in the world? It uses three types of fuel in three stages. If you could tell us a little about this. It, this has a long history behind it. Uh, for example, uh, ISRO really started with solid, uh, solid fuel rockets. Our very first satellite, uh, first, very first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3, was a fully solid state uh, rocket motor. And uh, this has, uh, we have gained a lot of experience in the development of such motors. So the two solid boosters that you see on the LVM-3, these have a very long heritage. Next comes the, uh, the, the main stage. Uh, and this is using, uh, again, this development of this particular engine, you could see the two nozzles. Uh, this particular engine, the, the Vikas engine, uh, was developed jointly with France. I, this is not being mentioned anywhere, but this was developed jointly with France. In fact, a lot of our uh, ISRO engineers had gone to France, stayed in France, worked with the uh, CNES, to develop this particular rocket engine, and then we brought this rocket, uh, brought this rocket engine back, and of course it has gone, got several upgrades now, and this is the engine, uh, two of them in fact, which are powering the first stage, and uh, this uses uh, 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 two fuels which are uh, very very commonly uh, commonly used. Uh, one is the uh, uh, one is the um, hydrazine, and the other is the uh, uh, oxidizer, which is, I think, uh, a red fuming nitric acid. And uh, then comes the main stage, which is the cryogenic engine. And the cryogenic engine has had a very, very, um, you know, uh, troubled start. Uh, work on the cryogenic engine had been started in India, uh, but on a very low scale, and particularly because the technology involved was very, very complex. 
Um, meanwhile, India thought that they could do a bit of a leapfrogging uh, and uh, get the engines from abroad. They tried with the US, they, uh, they tried with France, but the prices were very high. Uh, and so finally, it was Russia which agreed to give us those engines and more importantly, also give us the uh, know how for the engines. Right? Unfortunately, then because of the Cold War uh, uh, complications, uh, Russia had to go back on that deal. So finally, we ended up with, I think, seven engines, but no technology transfer. Although our engineers had been in Russia uh, for quite some time looking at some of these uh, technologies and, you know, looking at how these uh, engines are, uh, you know, they are uh, constructed. So there was some knowledge available with us. So we, these seven engines, we started the first uh, lot of GSLBs. Uh, they did not meet with very uh, great success. I think we had two successes, one partial success, and I think the rest were failures. But our work on the cryogenic engine picked up. Uh, and uh, finally, what you have today on the LBM is that cryogenic engine, which has been designed and developed by uh, in ISRO by Indian en engineers. And this is uh, quite a feat. At every time a launch happens, I always wait for the announcement that the cryo J stage has ignited. Mm. Next announcement, the cryo stage performance is normal. Because the cryo stage is really very important. This is the one that puts these heavy satellites, including the current payload of the Chandrayaan 3, into an orbit. So, uh, I believe the LVM3, although you uh, LVM3 is not uh, really uh, as powerful as some of the other rockets which are there globally. But the LVM-3 is a fantastic achievement as far as India is concerned. And definitely a workhorse uh, because, we, you know, we also use this for launching the OneWeb satellites. So this yeah, is going to become a workhorse sooner or later. Yes, and it's proving it with every single mission uh, related to it. It is proving that might. Now, sir, you are the former deputy director of ISRO, so I don't think anybody else could be better to answer this question. A few years ago, ISRO was performing only a few launches per year. Now there's almost one every month. Our correspondent was saying the same regarding to the LVM3, and you also pointed out yourself. What has led to this increase in frequency, and how do you see ISRO going forward? Well, I think uh, the point is that uh, uh, India is being looked upon as a good source of uh, launching uh, for satellites uh, you know apart quite apart from uh, the one web which we launched for uh, uh, this company uh, one web satellites i think and and then now of course for chandrayaan we're going to look, look forward to the launch of the nisa uh, nisa is the indo us uh, joint uh, program of having a satellite with two radars on board one has been supplied by the us the other is uh, been supplied by ISRO. Right now, the satellite is very much in Bangalore and perhaps slated for a launch sometime in 2024. So, so we do provide very good launch services, and you can say we have come of age. In fact, the only difficulty that I see is uh, we do not have a sufficient number of launch pads, which would really give us a boost to this part of the business of launching satellites. This is a very historic moment for India and uh, India, India's Chandrayaan-3 mission has of course successfully lift off and like people across India and probably even worldwide will be holding their breath for the next 40 about days when it's supposed to reach the moon's surface. I'm going to put you in the spot sir and ask you how optimistic are you about this mission? I'm very optimistic. You can't have space, uh, space uh, activities without having a degree of optimism. Cautious optimism, perhaps, but optimism. All right, sir. If we could just go back to uh, Sri Harikota's visuals that we have been getting, and if we could just go back to the visuals of the lift off when the historic moment, of course, took place. Yes. Now, for those of you who are joining us in, we would just like to recap quickly. The Indian Space Research Organization has just successfully launched a, about a couple of minutes back its third lunar mission, which is a Chandrayaan-3. 
It was perched on GSLV Mark III, which is a heavy lift launch vehicle, and it, the, it, the rocket was named as Bahubali. The rocket took off about at around 2.35 p.m. IST from the Sri Harikota spaceport. And the space research India Space Research, research Organization's chairperson, S. Somanath, along with his team, of course, announced that the satellite successfully separated from the Chandrayaan rocket. And what was expected from the mission for today has successfully been played out and it has been conducted. The journey was about 16 and a half minutes. Now ISRO's team called the GSLV Mark III rocket launcher as one of the best in ISRO's bucket. And now, of course, the critical phase of the mission has begun. We are being told that ISRO aims to reach the moon's surface in about 40 days. LVM-3 के उत्थापन के साथ ही हमारे अंतरिक्ष यान चंद्रयान-3 की चंद्रमा की यात्रा प्रारंभ हो चुकी है। As the rocket is soaring through the clear skies, every second moving closer to the accomplishment of the most important milestone in its mission to moon. Every Indian. All right, Mr. Rup Das Gupta, if I could just quickly come back to you. We have had Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2 missions, of course. Chandrayaan-1 was back in 2008. Chandrayaan-2 was in 2019, 22nd July. There's a lot of learning from those two missions that, of course, ISRO has done. And the objectives of those two missions were slightly different or even like very different than what Chandrayaan-3 seeks to achieve. But if you could tell us what exactly ISRO has learned from the past two lunar missions and we could see that playing out in this mission. Oh, um, you see, um, the Chandrayaan uh, 1 uh, was, a, uh, was the very first mission to the moon and uh, it had several uh, sensors and instruments on board uh, which would uh, help us to study the moon uh, first, it would help us to, uh, to, to take pictures of the moon, to take stereoscopic pictures of the moon, to look at the uh, study, the uh, geology and the lithology, uh, to study the, uh, study the moon's environment and many other uh, such factors. And in this, the Chandrayaan one was very successful. Uh, the most uh, interesting uh, aspect of Chandrayaan one was a small uh, cubic um, uh, uh, payload, which was actually this payload was suggested by our uh, late president Abdul Kalam, and he suggested that why not we have a small uh, piece of uh, you know small satellite which carries a camera and which is injected from Chandrayaan one onto the moon surface, and you take the pictures of the moon as it goes. At the same time, you keep that according the, from the sensors, whatever the probe is picking up. And finally, of course, the probe crashes onto the moon. It, this, this was a very interesting thing which uh, Kalam had uh, suggested. And it and the, one of the most wonderful things that came out of this was that we discovered that there is a possibility that there is water on the moon. Not free water as we know it, but water in the form of compounds with other uh, minerals. So this was a kind of you know bonus that we got uh, from the Chandrayaan one mission. Uh, the Chandrayaan one mission obviously uh, 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 caused a lot of excitement, and therefore a further mission was like a Chandrayaan two was uh, thought of. And this one, of course, we wanted to put a rover and have the rover uh, you know uh, come out of the lander and then uh, you know investigate the moon surface for about maybe uh, 500 meters or so because it had to communicate with the uh, lander all the time it could not the rover was not powerful enough to, uh, to communicate with the earth directly uh, unfortunately we had a failure but you know the chandrayaan 2 uh, orbiter the orbiter had a very very powerful camera not had it has and that's continuously taking pictures uh, of the moon and pictures at a very high resolution. Uh, I would say that this is perhaps the highest resolution camera which has taken pictures of the moon continuously. All and right. it's still available, it's still working. And these pictures are the pictures which have been used to and fed into the Chandrayaan 3 lander so that now the Chandrayaan 3 lander 
can actually refer to these pictures, compare them to the pictures it is getting from its own camera, and see that it's in the correct path. All right. So the, All right. Major issue. Yeah. Dr. Das Gupta, I'm so sorry to interject, but we are running out of time here. Thank you so much for breaking down everything that you've told us in the past, uh, in the in the broad in this broadcast, of course. And these are very complex missions, of course. So it becomes very important for our viewers also to understand what exa exactly India's ISRO is seeking with this mission. Thank you for joining us on this broadcast and getting us all those insights.